I've got one more constant acceleration formula for you. Let's look at V average at constant acceleration. So you recall uh, V average, we defined it this way. We said it's the change, the total change in position over the total change in time. And to illustrate how to find it, we thought about a complicated path, right? We had um, thought about an x versus time plot and said, what if we went briefly at a low velocity and then spent a lot of time at a higher velocity? Something like that. Well, if you were to plot that on a velocity versus time graph, this is good graph practice, it would be a low velocity for a while, just for a little bit, and then it would jump up to a high velocity for a longer time. So we could call these v1 and v2. And what we said was that v average is not just the average of those two, right? So not just uh, v1 plus v2 over 2. Right? We said to find it, in this case, you really need to find the total delta x, which would be kind of like this and the total delta t, which would be basically that. So to find v average in this complicated case, you had to go all the way back to the position time information. Well, and the reason was, remember, this is weighted. It's, it needs to be a weighted average. If you spent more time at v2, the distance you went at v2 needs to count more. So you don't, you don't average them because they're not all, all the same for the same amount of time. But, For constant acceleration, for constant acceleration um, from, let's say, this time I'll give them different subscripts. Usually a, a, a problem with acceleration and you're looking at the velocity, you think in terms of V naught, and then you get up to V, or I'll say V final in this case. Right? That's more the, the terms we use there. In that case, then, let's draw, remember what it would look like. Constant acceleration problem looks something like this. Here's x and here's t. And remember, it kind of goes off like that. And if we plot the velocity versus time, what does it do? That's the case where the velocity just increases. Okay. So if you picked one place to be v naught, I made it look like 0 here, and you pick another place to be v final, in this case, the average velocity is just the average of the initial and final velocities. And mathematically, it's just because every velocity is represented with an equal amount of time in between. So it works out that it is the average. Right? So then, in this case, you can say v average is v naught plus vf over 2. So in a lot of kinematics problems, we usually are at constant acceleration. Anything dropping, anything rolling is at constant acceleration due to gravity. And a lot of times they ask, what's the average velocity for the trip? And in those cases, you can't just do the average. But fundamentally, it is not just the average. It is delta x over delta t for complicated cases.